Hello ladies and gentlemen, in today's video I'll show you how you can create and animate these glossy circles in PowerPoint. So let's get started. Alright, so let's jump to PowerPoint and inspiration for today's video come from Kitka. You can find all of the amazing works by Kitka on Adobe Stock, link is in the video description. And when I saw these beautiful glossy circles by Kitka, I started thinking if we could create something similar in PowerPoint. And the answer is yes, and I will walk you through the whole process step by step. And by the way, if you would like to make your PowerPoint look black, you can go to Options, General, and under Office Theme, you can choose different colors. So let's choose black. And by the way, I'm using PowerPoint Office 365. Okay, so now let me show you how we can create these uh, glossy circles. First of all, let's ungroup this guy and let me show you what kind of shapes or layers it is made of. So we basically have three layers. The first one is Highlights. Then we have this smaller or inner circle and then we have this bigger or outside circle. And both of these circles are filled with radial gradients made out of three colors. So as you can see this bigger circle is a little bit brighter and the smaller circle is a little bit darker because we're using different brightness settings for these colors. At the same time you can see that these circles are using some subtle shadows. I have placed all of the shadow options here on the right side for the inner circle and the outside circle. As well I have all of the options that we need for these highlights. Alright so let me bring everything back into one place. And now we can jump into this blank slide where we have all of the options that we need. And now let me show you how we can create this purple circle. Okay, let's go to insert shapes and let's look for this circle tool. Hold down the shift key to draw a perfect circle and let's make it 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. That's beautiful. Let's bring it to the middle of the slide. Now let's duplicate it and let's make this copy orange. Now let's make this orange copy a little bit smaller. Let's insert 8 centimeters for height and width. And now let's align these two circles to the middle and to the center. We can remove the outlines. And now let's add a beautiful radial gradient to this orange circle. So let's check it out once again how it was done in the previous circle. Let's go to format shape. We can see three color stops and we can see that this gradient is set to radial. So let's select this orange circle and let's set the fill to gradient. For gradient type, let's choose radial. And for the direction, let's choose this one called from top left corner. Looks good. And as you can see, we need to have three colors or three color stops. So let's uh, click here to add one more. And as you can see, we have uh, different gradient positions for each of these color stops. So for the first one, let's insert 25% position. For the middle one, let's use 60%. And for the last one, let's use 8.5. Okay, now let me show you how I have uh, decided to choose, uh, you know, those specific colors for each of those circles. So let's select the first color stop and let's go to more colors. And now let's jump to custom tab and let's choose HSL color model. Because we will need to use this hue input field. As you can see there is no hue input field in RGB so that's why we'll be using HSL. And now let's move this color picker upwards just like that. As you can see, once the color picker moves upwards, the saturation value goes to 255, which is maximum. That's good. Now let's adjust the luminosity or the brightness. Let's move this slider downwards. So the maximum value for luminosity is 255 and we would like to have it somewhere at 50%. So let's just divide 255 by 2. That's about 128. That's awesome. So the saturation is at maximum, luminosity at 50%. And now if we would move this color picker just here at the top, only the hue value should change and the saturation and luminosity should stay the same. So now we can choose any hue color that we want, for example this hot pink. Let's use uh, 238, I think it looks good. And now let's just hit OK and we have our first color. Now let's select the second color stop 
And let's choose the same hot pink color that we have just created. And let's go to more colors. Let's jump to HSL. And now for the hue value, let's move 30 steps to the left side, which means we have to subtract 30 from 238, which leaves us with 208. Okay, in this way we have created this purple color. Now we can hit OK. Now let's select the last color stop. Once again, let's choose the last recent color, which is purple. And let's go to more colors. Let's go to HSL. And once again, let's subtract 30 from this value, which leaves us with 178. Click OK. And this way we have created these three beautiful colors separated by 30 steps of hue. And now let me fill these small circles with these colors just for reference. And as you can see, we have some brightness options here at the bottom. So for the first color, let's use zero brightness, so we don't have to move the slider. But for the second color stop, let's use minus 40. So for the brightness slider, let's insert minus 40. All right. And for the last color, let's use minus 70. All right, so this is how our gradient looks right now. That's good. And now let's add a shadow to this inner circle. Let's go to shadow options. And let's choose this preset called offset bottom right. For the shadow color, let's use the eyedropper tool and let's pick this dark color on the edge of the circle. That's good. And for the transparency, let's use 20%. Let's leave the size at 100. For the blur, let's use 25 points. Angle 45. And for the distance, let's insert 15 points. That's awesome. All right, so the inner circle is ready and we can use the format painter and paste the same style to this outside circle. And now we'll have to make it a little bit brighter. As you can see, we have different brightness settings. So for the first color stop, let's use 20% brightness. For the middle color stop, let's use minus 20. And for the last one, let's use minus 50. So we basically increased all of these color stops by 20%. And let's adjust the shadow settings as well. For the color, let's choose pure black. And for the transparency, let's use 60%. All right, so both of the circles are ready. So the smaller circle is a little bit darker, the outside circle is a little bit brighter. And now all that's left to do is to add some highlights to make this uh, circle a little bit more realistic. So let me insert a new slide where we can create all of the highlights that we need. Let's pick this uh, circle tool, hold down the shift key to get a perfect circle. Let's use uh, 10 centimeters for the height and width again. Let's align it to the middle of the slide. Let's add a white outline so we can see better what we're doing. And now let's make a copy. And for this copy, let's add 5 centimeters for the height and width. And now we can activate slide guides. And now we can align this smaller circle to the middle and top of this bigger circle. We can use the align options as well. Now let's copy the smaller circle. And now let's bring it to the bottom of this big circle. Okay, now let's select all of these circles. Let's go to Merge Shapes and choose Fragment. And now we should end up with four different shapes. Let me turn off the guides. So we should have one shape on the right side, one shape on the left side, and these two beautiful circles. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now let's select the bottom circle, the shape on the right side, and let's go to Merge Shapes and let's choose Union. And this way we have created this interesting shape that we will use to create a highlight. So let's fill this shape with white. Let's remove the line. And now let's paste it to this slide. We can add some transparency to this highlight. Now let's make sure that we select the highlight and the outside circle. And let's align them to the right and to the top. So that this highlight sits perfectly on this outside circle. Let's reduce the fill of this highlight even more. And I think gradient fill would look even more awesome. So let's use gradient fill. And as you can see, PowerPoint uses the most recent gradient, which was radial gradient with three color stops. So let's change it a little bit. Let's use two color stops. Let's change it to liner. And let's choose any direction that we want. So let's choose this one with a white color at the top. And for this red color, let's make it white as well. And let's bring the transparency to 100%. Okay. And for this second color stop, for this second white color stop, let's bring it to position 70. 
and let's increase the transparency to 70. All right, and now our highlight is looking pretty awesome. We can adjust it even more. Let's move it to the right side. Let's reduce the size a little bit. We can use the rotation handle to rotate this highlight a little bit to the left side, just like that. And now let's select the highlight, hold down the shift key, select the big circle, and let's make a copy here on the left side. We can delete this highlight on the right side. Now let's select the highlight, the big circle. Let's go to Merge Shapes and let's choose Intersect. And this way we have used this outer circle to cut some of the highlight. Okay, so the highlight on the right side is ready. And now let me show you how we can create this highlight on the left side. So for that, let's use a triangle. Let's go to Shapes. Let's insert a triangle. We can make it white. No outline. And let's flip it vertically. Now let's right click it and let's choose Edit Points. And let's make these two top points smooth. Just choose Smooth from the options. Now let's just play a little bit with the position of these points and with these uh, white handles until we get a shape that looks something like this. And we can use the Format Painter to paste the same style from our previous highlight. And now all we want to do is basically switch the position of these two color stops so that the white one is on top and the transparent one is at bottom. And let's actually remove the transparency for the first color stop and this way make this highlight more intense. Now we can use the rotation handle and we can resize this highlight and position it wherever we want. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I will add a few more highlights and I will meet you in a second. Alright, so our glossy circle is ready. Now we can select all of the shapes and hit Ctrl G to group. Now let's copy this circle and let's paste it to my previous slide. And let's compare it with my previous glossy circles. I think it looks pretty much the same and it looks awesome. That's beautiful. And using the same method I have created the rest of these glossy circles. Alright, so now let's talk about animations. In the intro of this video you have seen some circle animations flying all over the place. So for these first five slides I have used the morph transition. And the Morph Transition makes it really easy to create awesome animations. So basically you have to have two slides. So I have duplicated the first slide and on the second slide I have made some of these bubbles huge. And the rest of these bubbles I have moved them to the side. And this was the technique that I have used to animate all of these intro slides. And in some of these intro slides I have used motion path animations as well. So let me show you how those motion path animations work. Let's open up the animation pane. And here as you can see these four circles have motion path animations. They move up and down. So let's say you have this circle. You can select it. Go to add animation. Look for motion paths and choose line. You can select any direction that you want. I'm using down. And for the duration I'm using half a second for all of these motion paths animations. And in the effect option, I have a little bit of smooth start, smooth end, auto reverse, and for the timing, I'm using repetition until the end of slide. And for all of these animations, I'm adding a little bit of delay so that these animations don't happen at the same time. And because of those delays, we get this kind of wavy animation effect. That's awesome. Alright, so in this slide, I have used motion paths as well. Just a bit more circles, that's awesome. And in this slide I have used even more glossy circles and even more motion paths, but you know, the principle and technique is the same. And for this slide I have used motion path animations as well, and if you'd like to learn in more detail how to create these exact animations, you can check out my previous video on New Morphic PowerPoint, where I have showed how to create this exact animation, which is the same as in this slide. And that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen, for this tutorial. Now you know how you can create and animate glossy circles and PowerPoint. Thank you for watching, everyone. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on my next video.